coming at you with another exciting video. In this video, we want to talk about the boys of the Harris House. But before we jump right in and speak about the boys of the Harris House, we wanted to say that the book is called Elvira and Friends, but it is a co-ed book. Elvira is a witch, and she goes to the school that's called the Marshall Academy. But her rival school is a school of mostly boys, and it's called the Harris House. Now, the Harris House is ran by an individual, and his name is Gary. And Gary Harris runs the Harris House. He is considered, and he is called by most, the Cockrell Master. At Elvira School, which is the Marshall Academy, she's ran by Natasha Marshall, and her title is the Hen Master. Now, each year, Gary and Natasha, they has this friendly wager where they go back and forth and where they discuss who's going to be the top school to compete at their regional tournament. You see, each top fighter has to fight each other at an individual tournament at their own personal school. And once those type fighters emerge, then they fight each other at the actual regional tournament between the Harris House and the Marshall Academy. <sighs> so we're gonna introduce a video talking about most of the girls that goes to the Marshall Academy. But in this video, we wanna talk about the boys of the Harris House. Now, the Harris House is not, they're not witches. Most of them are, you know, it might be one or two warlocks, but the boys of the Harris House is considered the school of the gifted, meaning that they had different types of spells. Some of the students can uh, turn into different things. It's just different abilities, different objects, but only the strongest survive. So the first student that we want to talk about from the Harris House, and this student goes by the name of Speedy. Speedy is the son of a famous night terror. He's a werewolf that terrorized local towns. But Speedy Fathers had retired from terrorizing everything, and all he wants to do is raise his son. But he doesn't raise his son to be a weakling. He tells his son that I want you to be the greatest. He knows that there are other gifted fighters out there. So he wants to send his son to school so he can, can compete against the strongest fighters. Uh, what which makes Speedy great is he's a warrior. And his ultimate thing is he want to protect his family. He is also the outcast of his family other than his father who loves him uh, dearly. Let's talk about some of Speedy's abilities. Speedy, of course, is very a very good speedster and he has uh, great agility. He grounds his long nails in the ground that makes him immovable. So in battle, if Speedy want to have an immovable ability, what he does is he knows how to make his, his fingernails extend themselves into the soil. Uh, his nails doesn't really work in, into concrete, so this ability works more into the ground. And he has an immovable uh, force around him that makes him almost unmovable. Uh, he's a skilled fighter with those same nails. So if you come in battle, if he swing those long nails at you, it may scratch you great deadly. He's able to feed off of illumination of the moon to regenerate itself. So if you get Speedy badly injured, the moon uh, can regenerate him. So it all depends on the size of the moon. If it's a full moon, he can regenerate uh, more. If it's a half a moon, then just think about if it's a full moon, he generate faster. A half a moon, it takes longer for him to generate. And uh, and he also uses a form of telekinesis. So Speedy in battle is a very scared warrior, like we said. In battle, he can become immovable. So just think about it. He can go really fast, and he can go immovable. So this is a foe that's unorthodox. Like you may not know 
who are you dealing with in battle? And this is the first uh, main character from the Harris House. Next, we want to talk about a character that goes by the name of Tony the Bear Ninja. He loves to be called Tony for short, and he doesn't do a lot of talking, actually. Uh, he's a, he is a, a ninja, and he loves to walk around with his nunchucks. But what makes Tony so interesting is he can conjure up different weapons by, with different spells with, just by using his mind. Uh, Tony is from a place called Mihau Land. That's M-E-H-U land. And that simply means juice land. The, the way that they get the name juice land from is from the fact that there is a juice river that flows around the main house. And the people that controls the main house is Tony and his, and his family. And this river or the juice river is so significant because if you take one big gut from this river, you may have eternal life. If you take a sip, it may extend your life by 10 to 15 years. So you just don't want everybody coming around drinking from this river. So Tony holds that his whole family job is to protect this river. But Tony's siblings told him that one day he's going to be the heir to the land. So they wanted him to go off to the Harris house to, be, to compete against uh, greater foes or even equal foes so Tony can, you know, learn how to cra uh, learn his craft more and be more skilled in battle so he can protect his homeland, which is Juice Land. Like I said, Tony can summon weapons with his mind. He's also, he can turn parts of his body into iron as a defense or offense during the fight. Meaning, if you punch in Tony rapidly or, you know, just punching him, period, or hitting him with an object, he could turn a part of that body into iron where it, it softens the blow or if it doesn't soften the blow, he doesn't feel the blow at all. So he's very skilled tactician, meaning hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's definitely good at that. And, you know, he's good with weapons also. So in battle, Tony the Bear Ninja is a significant part of the boys of the Harris house. Next, we have an interesting character. And this character has been talked about over and over throughout time. So I want to throw my hand, hand in the rack. I mean, I'm a co-writer on the El Viral Friends and another co-writer goes by the name of Janae. She's a, she's a co-writer on El Elvira and Friends as well. So we, so if you haven't found out by now, so, you know our characters comes from different walks of life: monsters, bears, uh, it may be a human or so. But you know that's where our characters come from. So our next character goes by the name of Gus. Now, Gus is the fourth cousin to Dracula. He's from the city called Puri. So that's P-O-U-R-I, which is located outside of Barry. So let me stop right there also when I'm describing Gus. The Elvira Friends world sits on a continent called Exodus. And what makes this land so significant is, is broken up in different states or different we call them lands so it's lands or villages or states but mostly we call them villages or land every land has a different ability mostly and in this case uh so we're going to break down where most of these uh these characters are from and this character is from puri which is outside of Barry. Barry is V-A-R-I. He's the youngest of, of his royal family, and he's also mischievous in nature. He's a little cocky because he knows that he comes from a royal family, and this cockiness rubs off, wrong, rubs off the wrong way with other people. At the Harris house, he walked walked in into the school the first day 
telling everybody that he's going to be the leader of the Harris house. So in his mind, he thinks he's the leader. But from the strength of might of Speedy, Speedy thinks that he's the leader. So one person in particular that does not like Gus is his first cousin, Roxanne. And we'll touch on Roxanne more when we talk about the girls of the Marshall Academy at another time. But in this video, we just want to, you know, specifically talk about Gus. Uh, like I said, him and his cousin Roxanne, they don't like each other. Let me talk about some of Gus' abilities. Uh, one in particular, Gus has the ability of flight. Meaning that with his spells and, it, you know, he can fly away from battle, meaning that he can become a long range fighter. Also, he can fly if he need to get to town to town or land to land, he can use that ability as well. He needs to practice to be able to fly far, you know, further distances. But for now, Gus definitely can fly. Uh, Gus also has the ability to read minds. So if you're talking about Gus, he, can, he knows what you're saying because he can read your mind. Uh, it's only certain people that can block out this ability from Gus. But for the most part, people are weak in Gus' eyes and he can't read your thoughts. Uh, Gus has te telekinesis just like Speedy. So that's a, uh, you know, that's something that they, uh, you know, it counsels off each other in battle because both of them can use that ability. And also Gus can manipulate fire and shadows. So those are two abilities that he has as well. Also, I want to continue with Gus. Gus is often seen with his favorite bird that goes by the name of Roscoe. Roscoe has been trained from birth to defend Gus. So just like Amber has Miss Bluebell to defend her in battle, Gus also has a uh, bird to defend him that goes by Gus, uh, goes by Roscoe. And, Ros and Roxanne also has a bird to defend her in battle. And like I said, we'll talk about that another time. And, and, and Roxanne Bird and, and uh, Gus Bird, uh, Roscoe, they don't like each other. Uh, Roscoe has the ability to grow in size, just like Miss Bluebell. Uh, Roscoe has razor sharp feathers. That mean in a battle, if Gus is riding on top of uh, Roscoe and Roscoe feels the need to defend um, Gus, she can shoot feathers off her back. That's razor sharp that can cut like a knife. So you want to be careful, you know, you know, when Roscoe is in the, in the defense mode to defend his master, which is Gus. Also, Roscoe can become the shadow that Gus needs to control. So when I said that Gus can't control shadows, Roscoe is that bird that Gus can control as well. Okay, so let's talk about another character from the Harris Academy. In this character, we go, he goes by the name of Swampy. Now, Swampy is from the Swamp Village, which is called Waters Deep, meaning that everybody around uh, Swampy's village is mostly water because Swamp is more seaweed and natural, thing, you know, natural. He can live in water with no problem. Uh, what makes Swampy so interesting is that he's the middle son of the chief of that village, uh, you know, of the village called Waters Deep. And he oversees the protection of the children of the village. So the master chief from that village, Waters Deep, controls the village. And of course, he's going to, uh, you know, he want to protect his son. But they want Swampy to get out because one day he may have to protect the village on his own and they want him to get stronger. So when they got the invitation to, you know, to attend the Harris Academy, I mean the Harris house, uh, the master chief took it to his ability to tell his son that he definitely wants him to attend uh, the Harris, uh, the Harris, uh, Harris house. Swampy would be the first uh, native of Waters Deep to leave 
in decades to event uh, to uh, attend academy. The last person to leave to defend academy was actually the chief of Waters Deep. What makes uh, Swampy so interesting? He has the ability to turn his limbs into attack vines. He can shoot these vines in the air. He can shoot these vines underground. He can even uh, take vines off the tree with his mental ability and use the vines off the tree as his defense or offense. So that's a very, very good ability to have. He can communicate with animals. Mo mostly he can uh, uh, communicate with, you know, amphibians and mostly animals of the swamp. He needs to learn how to, you know, communicate with different animals. But because he only has been in the swamp, that's the primary animals that he can communicate with. Uh, another good ability about him, he slowly drains the energy of his opponents. So if he take that vine and wraps that vine around you, he can take your energy and absorb it as his own energy. So that's a very, very foe that you got to stand away from because if you don't know that ability, then you may have your energy siphoned away from you. And he can use water as a defense, meaning he can, he can raise the tide or he can remove the tide. He can take that water and, and, and you know, try to drown his opponent or, or wash his opponent away. So Swampy is a very, very good person that uh, you probably want to have on your team. And if you don't know his ability, the first time fighting him, because he looks strange or whatever, you know, you you never seen a swamp person, then uh, you probably want to sit back and, you know, see the moves that Swampy can do. All right, the next person we want to talk about that goes by the name of Frankie. Now, what makes Frankie so interesting is Frankie doesn't have significant parents because he was created in the lab by Dr. Marie. And Frankie was, in, uh, he was invented to be a monster that was controlled by Dr. Uh, Marie to terrorize the Southtown village. But Frankie doesn't want to terrorize anybody. He just want to be a young kid and he want to have the ability to grow and learn different things. So Dr. Marie grew frustrated with, with Frankie because he didn't want to terrorize anything or anyone, and she cast him out of Southtown Village. And then what Dr. Marie did after she didn't have any success with Frankie, she recreated another being, and that being goes by the name of Claudette. Now, Claudette is that being that does all of the, you know, everything that Dr. Marie wants, uh, Claudette does before one day, hopefully she wake up from the terror that she is. Okay. Like I said, the, uh, he was created by Dr. Marie. Even though he's an older kid, he has a mindset as, as a five-year-old, as, as a, you know, as a five-year-old, you know, sometimes his, his mindset reverts to his current age and sometimes his mindset is set at five years old. And the laboratory that he was created in was called the Laboratory of Misery. And it's kind of ironic that he's he's not, um, uh, you know, he's he doesn't have that type of mindset. He just want to love people. He would just want to, you know, get stronger and, you know, be a regular kid. Although uh, Frankie has a mindset of a five-year-old, he is super strong. That's one of his abilities, his strength. Super strong. Uh, and this may be ironic, Frankie walks slow from time to time, but in battle, he has a speed, a uh, great speed. Some would say he has the speed of lightning, but nobody has ever seen his true speed. So let's say he has the speed of a gazelle. That's how he moves in battle. Also, he has the ability to control lightning. So, no, I won't call him a lightning god. I won't go that far. But he could bend lightning because of the lightning rods on his neck. Um, so, with that ability, 
he can actually take that lightning, control it, and he can shoot lightning back to you. So if you don't have the proper techniques or spells to deflect that uh, lightning ability, you may be fried. So Frankie uh, will play a significant role at the Harris House amongst his other, you know, colleagues that go that attends the Harris House. Okay, next I want to talk about the smallest kid at the Harris House. And this kid goes by the name of Proteus. Proteus is the smallest kid at the Harris House. He's the smallest kid and he's, he's the, the mostly bullied. And one reason why I created this character is because a lot of kids are bullied because of their stature. But that doesn't mean that your stature has to define you because I have met, you know, some kids when I was younger that was a lot smaller than me that was the toughest kids that you can imagine. So I, I wanted to, you know, intertwine those characters into my childhood and the things that I have saw and read, and you know, in the past. And I said, well, let me intertwine those into, you know, my book. Uh, Proteus is the son of a mysterious warlock that was said to have used his son for his experiments. Nothing is said about his mother for now. I guess we will learn more about his mother at another time. Uh, Proteus was very insecure because all he wanted to do was get stronger as a kid. And from the cries that his dad heard, he said, I need to do something. So, Proteus has a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type personality, meaning if you bully him or teasing him, you don't want to make him mad. Because if you make him mad, he has the ability to, to transfer into his alter ego, which is P Funk. P Funk is very powerful and a very skilled fighter. And like I said, P-Funk is activated by fear. So if you ever see his eyes turn a different color, get away from Proteus. Because when P-Funk come smashing and grabbing and crashing up everything, then you know that you ran up on a very fearful Proteus. Uh, Proteus... Also, ability that his dad gave him was the ability and the power of levitation to avoid altercations because of his small size. So, yes, he's small, but he can levitate. And I won't call it flying, but he can levitate, get away from you, and move around in the sky. Proteus definitely uh, want to get stronger. He want to compete at the turn at his, uh, you know, his current tournament at the Harris House. So he can compete against some of the witches at uh, the Marshall Academy, where they have their neutral, uh, the meet on neutral grounds, and they go into battle. Uh, Proteus is definitely a, a, a person that you don't want to trifle with. Uh, another person that I want to talk about is Iggy. That's I G G Y. Now Iggy is from a place called Moseyland. Moseyland, M-O-Z-I-E. And mosey means to go where you don't know where you're going, basically. So just like Swampy, Iggy is one of the first people to leave Moseyland, and he stumbled across a town called South, South Town Village, which is not even too far from Moseyland, and that's when he's, you know, a fairy met him and told him about the Harris House. And that's when he kept moseying on and found the Harris House and then he enrolled in school himself. Uh, Iggy is also the son of Igor and the nephew of Clunk. Now, what makes Clunk so significant is he is the lackey for Dr. Marie. He, uh, Clunk would do all of Dr. Marie's biddings and his nephew is Iggy. But Clunk has no recollection of Iggy because he left South Town. I mean, he left Moseyland long ago before uh, Iggy was ever even born. But Iggy talks about his uncle all the time 
because that's who his father talk about. He talks about his father. I mean, he talk, the father talks about his brother, uh, Clunk, and, you know, and because Iggy loves his father, Igor, he, you know, talks about his uh, uncle as well, which is Clunk. Uh, Iggy has the ability to scan and maintain information from books within seconds, meaning that he can read a book, comprehend that book, and he can do some of the abilities of that book. Um, another thing about uh, Iggy, he's not a physical fighter, but he can predict situational outcomes through statistics he has gathered in his mind. So I'm not saying that Iggy doesn't have any abilities. He just haven't had any abilities to use those abilities on. So we'll save that information for another day. But Iggy is definitely one that uh, wants to be in good graces of Gus. He chose Gus over Speedy when he enrolled into the Harris house. And he is Gus Lackey. Meaning if you talk about Gus in front of uh, Iggy, he's going to go back and tell Gus everything. So he's definitely that informant that um, you want to stay away from if you want to be on the good side of uh, Gus. Uh, the next character we want to talk about is Cassius. Cassius from, is from a place called the Down. And the Down is the furthest part of the map of, uh, uh, furthest part of the continent of Exodus. And that's where Cash is from. Um, in his hometown, he is the greatest. And that's the way he feel, that he is the greatest. So one day his parents came to him and told him, since you feel that you are the greatest, I want for you to go to the Harris house and I want you to compete against other people who may be greater than you. In Cash's mind, he's the greatest and there's nobody greater than him. So when he attended school, he told them, I'm the greatest, have no interest on being the leader here, I just want to fight. Uh, what makes uh, Cash so great is he has the ability of speed, his accuracy in his punches and kicks is like no other. His gloves create a burst of heated energy when they come in contact with their opponents. Okay, so the way Cash's roll is like this. If he punch you one or two times, those are just two punches. But if he do combos up on you with a series of kicks and punches, his gloves start to turn to fire. And the more that he hits you, it's called collection, just similar to Tony the, uh, the Bell Ninja. The more that he hits you, the more heavier his punches get. So if you think that you're an opponent and you're super strong and you can't keep up with the speed of caches, the more that he hits you, the heavier his punches get, and you will feel the burn of his gloves. That's a hell of a way to... Uh, knock somebody out and not too many people can cancel out that ability so Cassius is the one that may take down a lot of people he has acute hearing so if you have a strategy keep it to yourself because he may hear everything that you say uh, and he has a high sense of smell so if he if you make him angry and you try to hide and you cannot defend yourself Cassius may come hear you or smell for you. And when he find you, he don't want to do any talking. He's going to tell you that he's just greatest. He's going to tell you what moves he's going to do on you. And then he's going to execute those moves. It's up to you to defend yourself. So Cassius, the speed, the accuracy, the heat of his gloves, and uh, the ability of collection, the more times he hits you, the heaviest gloves get on you, not for him. Because for him, the gloves get lighter. For you, they get heavier. So it means that the hits hurt more and more and more. The next character that I want to talk about goes by the name of Lamar. Now, Lamar is the son of an ancient pharaoh who said that he has displeased the gods. And once he displeases gods, they did not curse his the Pharaoh. They cursed Lamar, who was the Pharaoh's firstborn son. 
And Lamar's punishment was he was made to wander across time, meaning they didn't give him an expiration date. That's right. He was basically, he's ancient. He, you know, he, he was he's an ancient being. The only being able to spend time with a certain time with his father before he was forced to cast and, you know, wander across time. And the last known time period that he spent with his father was 700 AD. Uh, Lamar uses the wrappings to protect his true identity and to hold his body in place. Now let's talk about some of Lamar's abilities. One ability he, have, he has is he can summon storms. He, you know, he can use the, the sand that's in his body to, uh, that's not in his body, surrounding his body. Like that sand is what's holding his body in place. And then on top of that is the wrappings. So the sand that's holding his body in place is his protection. So he can use that ability for offense and defense. When he's done, that sand gets back and it, you know, it wrap around his body. Uh, Lamar also has another ability, and that's to project false realities. And the last ability that that's known by Lamar is seeking time shift. So, like I said.